Hey, what's up everyone? So I was debating on if I was even going to talk about this topic. It might be controversial. Um, but I thought about it and I'm like, you know what? It, if you, if you're willing to listen and really listen to it, you'll get the meaning behind it. So I was asked a question, what is one of the most profound things that you've ever heard? And it was from a teacher that I had back at Mesa Community College. And he was actually a communications teacher. So this was really interesting. I wish I would have kept his number because the guy had a lot of insight. But he said that he was a recovering racist. He said it to the whole class. And you should have seen the jaws drop, a recovering racist. And so without he wasn't afraid of what he said he didn't say oh wait wait no this is what i mean but he did explain what he meant and he said if if you went into an alleyway and you saw a big black guy versus a little old white lady how you how would you perceive it and he goes he goes most people would freak out about something like that a big black guy i know i would and he said, but a little white lady, I wouldn't think anything of it. But the little white lady could be the serial killer. And the big black guy could be the nicest person on the planet. But we have these perceived notions where, well, the big black guy, he could hurt me. This little white lady, she doesn't, and she's old, she doesn't really have anything. And it was kind of interesting how he put it. Like, um, I got it, you know? And another interesting thing that he did, when he would grade our papers, he would make sure that we would put our names on the back of the paper and we had to hand it in backwards. Because he says, you have a natural bias on how you see people, even your own students. You might like more stu some students more than other students. And he had mentioned that he didn't, he didn't want to do that. He wanted to grade fairly. So after we would have our names, he would turn them over. He would grade them without seeing the name. And then he would uh, have us pick up our own papers. And what, what was so cool about that is he realized that he had biases and responded to the realization of the biases. And sometimes that's the best thing that we can do is be conscious and aware of our weaknesses. When we're conscious and aware of them, we can do something about it. If we're unaware, we don't know what to do. We don't even know we have them. We all have weaknesses in one way or another. And you don't want to overemphasize on your weaknesses, but you do want to realize that they're there. Because when you realize they're there, you can act on them. And that's one of the coolest things that I liked about that teacher is he openly admitted to his biases in a way that you're not supposed to admit to him. You're not supposed to admit you like other students more than some other students. You're not supposed to admit that. As a teacher, you grade the papers and you give the papers back. But he took it a step further. And... With that being said, always remember, if you have any weaknesses, realize them and put yourself in position of strength. Always put yourself in a position of strength. And you can put yourself in a better position of strength when you know your strengths and you know your weaknesses. Be cognitive of yourself and be the best version of yourself that you can be. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you.